What's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, with an unboxing video for you. Today, the New Egg Fairy came and left a box on my doorstep, and you know how much I love the New Egg Fairy. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and kick off this unboxing with this product right here. This is a Tower Raid TR4 UT BPN by Sans Digital. Now, I've actually bought quite a few different SATA arrays from Sans Digital. And they've all worked really, really good. But this is a new one that supports USB 3.0 and has internal RAID. So you can see it holds four drives. And it supports RAIDs level 0, 1, 1 plus 0, 3, 5, and clone, which is a new RAID I, I'm not even familiar with. And uh, I think it was like about $170 when I bought it from Newegg, but I'm sure the price is going to fluctuate a lot. So, so check on it. But it comes with a power cable. You can connect it through eSATA or USB. I'll probably connect it through eSATA and USB, depending on which computer I have it connected to. But the main reason I got this was I have two Western Digital Red 3 terabyte drives that I want to put in there to start it off because I find that my 14 terabyte home server is a lot of storage, but it's too slow over the network for video editing. So all the videos that I do for you guys, um, it's a pain in the ass. I have to copy the video from the camera. I put it out on the array to store it. Then I recall it back and I try to access it over the network or from the other computers. And it's just a nightmare. So I want to set this up as a network share so that all my video can just be downloaded to it. And it's locally accessible from SATA six gigabit right here or six gigabyte right here on this machine. And that way I'll be able to edit the video directly from the array and I won't have any performance issues, which will save me time. And that's awesome. So looking at the back here, uh, it just says right here, it comes with an eSATA cable, a USB cable, a power cord, a quick start guide, a manual, and some screws. Screws are always a good thing. So, and it's just a four bay compact tower. Let's go ahead and open it up here. It's actually a very nice box. It's got a lift out here on the top. Let's go ahead and scoot this back. Okay, we've got the quick start guide for Tower Raid. We have the USB 3.0 cable, and you can always tell because the end's a lot fatter, and they're usually blue. Got a power cable. Got my eSATA cable here. Doesn't look to be a very long one though. I might have to get a different one to use for my application since my CPU sits on the floor. It looks like it's about a three footer. Go ahead and set that off the side. We've got some cool screws that are uh, finger screws and Phillips. Wow, and straight slot. So pretty much anything will run these screws in. And we got the CD. So let's go ahead and toss that aside. Wing. All right, so let's go ahead and get the array out. Thud. Every box was harmed in the making of this video. All right, get rid of the foam. I wonder what my garbage man thinks about me. I usually have 10 times more boxes out by the curb than anything else. All right, get rid of that. And here's the money right here. It looks identical in every way to their regular four drive enclosures, except for this one has the RAID in it. And if you flip it around here on the back, it looks like it has a little spin, uh, spin dial. I'll have to look in the manual to see what that's for. It looks like it's got some kind of a button to reset it. And it's got an eSATA and a USB. So, oh, it says right here, the little spinner is to set the RAID level. So whether you want RAID 0, RAID 1, large RAID 3, um, which is really cool. So you just slap the drives in it and this thing just presents itself as one drive to the computer. And I think that's really cool because then you don't have to have a RAID card or fuss around with any of that configuration stuff. So flipping it around here in the front, open the door, you can see you got the four bays right there. Now, unfortunately, these ones aren't the cool type where you just slide the drives in. You do have to screw them in from the side. They don't have a front fastening mechanism. You could technically just slide them in and leave them in there, but you don't want them to vibrate loose while they're in operation because it's just not worth losing data over. So let's go ahead and crack this thing open. All right, guys, I had to find a screwdriver because they got these things just on here way too tight. Let's go ahead and break those loose. When I put them back on, I'm just gonna make them finger tight. Off. Now these these arrays, not the RAID version, but just the standard version. I have three of these attached to my uh, Windows Home Server 2011 system that I built, and uh, they've been working phenomenally. So there you go, the top. It's actually really good construction. It doesn't feel like really really flimsy pot metal. It actually feels pretty good, and the finish on it is neat too. So flipping it around, now you can look back in there. You can see all the little SATA cables all hooked up in there, connected to the back plane and the power supply on the bottom. So hopefully you guys can get a good look in there. So 
So now let's go ahead and put some drives in there. So when you order drives from Newegg, they usually come like this. They're OEM and they're just wrapped in bubble wrap. Get out my trusty scissors here. And they're in an anti-static bag. All right, chuck that one. Fresh out of the box. So there's one three terabyte Western Digital Red. Now the Western Digital Reds, I only, I have two that I've purchased already and they've actually been pretty reliable for me. And they've got 64 mega cache, so they actually work really, really fast. And they're great for data storage and they're supposed to work great in arrays like this running 24 seven and that's why I bought them. They're not that much more expensive than the greens and they're a hell of a lot cheaper than the blacks. And then here's another one. So that'll give me a total of six terabytes, uh, far less than that formatted. So let's go ahead and open the front here. They install really, really easily. So we'll just go ahead and start at the base at the bottom. Just keep the center of gravity low. You just put it on the little sliders here, push it back, snaps into place. Take another one, put it right on top, push it in, slide it into place. Now normally I'd space them out, but I plan on getting two more drives here pretty soon. So I figured why, why bother? Just, just let's just go ahead and stack them so that I don't have to move drives around. And then the little screws here, the finger screws, you just go ahead and put those in on the sides. I'm only gonna put one in each side because I don't need it that well supported. We don't have a lot of major earthquakes here. So go ahead and close that up. Put this back on. Okay, now we check here. It says our RAID levels are RAID 0, RAID 1, large, RAID 3, 4, clone, 5, RAID 5, or 7, clean JBOD, and 6, 8, and 9 are reserved, probably because there'll be firmware updates down the road to support other stuff. So now the RAID level that I want to select for this is 5 because I want parity and I don't mind losing a little bit of disk space. The only problem is with two disks, I can't enable RAID 5. I believe I have to have three disk minimum to do RAID 5. So I might opt for the cloning method where each drive basically clones to another drive because I don't want to lose data because this is going to be my video drive. So I definitely want it to be redundant, but I also want it to be performant. Okay guys, I went ahead and moved the dial on the back to RAID 0. I decided to go with RAID 0 since right now I only have two drives and I'm more interested in performance because I'm using this for video editing. Um, but once I get a third drive, what I'll probably do is move the data over to my home server and then move it over to a RAID 5 just to make it uh, more secure. I don't mind if I lose some video if something crashes, but once I get up over six terabytes, I'm really not gonna wanna lose anything. So for the time being, we'll go ahead with RAID 0 for performance reasons. Let's go ahead and plug in the power cable. Get this thing set up here. Okay, plugged in. Get us some power. It said to initialize the array, you push the little button on the back for five seconds while you're powering it on. Okay, the button's in. One, two, three, four, five, and release. And now it should be configuring the drives. You wanna be really careful moving this around when it's on. Discs don't like to be jarred really hard. So you guys can see two of the lights are on for two of the discs. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the USB 3 cable to get it configured. And then ultimately I'll probably connect it to the computer through eSATA. Mainly just cause I'm gonna mount it back behind the computer and it'll be permanently connected. All right, go ahead and plug this in. I'm gonna go ahead and put the software in. And there it is, it looks like it actually is connected. So uh, let me go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a look at the RAID software and we'll go ahead and configure the disks. All right guys, so here you have the software, the SANS digital software that came with it. And you can see as I fired it up, it did find the drive and it found the RAID that it automatically configured from disk three and disk four, 5.5 uh, gigabyte uh, RAID zero. And it looks like in the software, you can actually control the RAID. You can actually see the individual disks. You can come in here and delete the RAID and create a new RAID. 
Um, and it even shows some raid levels that weren't even accessible through the little toggle switch on the back. So that little toggle switch on the back looks like it's just for if you want to create a raid just using the ray itself, holding the button on the back and letting it do it. If you do it through the software, it looks like you have a lot more flexibility and options. So coming over here, you can see I've already configured disk N right here. This is my 5.5 gigabyte, um, sorry, 5.5 terabyte drive rather. And uh, let me go ahead and pull up a little copy test here. I went ahead and created a 300 megabyte, or sorry, 620 megabyte text file that I'm going to go ahead and just copy to the end drive, which I've already done once. There you go. And you can kind of see how fast it copies it. So this is 620 megabytes of data copied over USB 3.0 to the array. And the array is going crazy over here. And see, we're about 70%, 80%, 90%, and done. So for one continuous file copy. And it looks like our speed, let's see, rated in megabytes per minute, 1.8 gigabytes per minute. That's not horrible. Um, it's not super, super fast. Uh, uh, so I'll check with SATA and see what numbers I get with that. All right, guys, now I got the drive connected, uh, or the array, rather, connected via eSATA, and I went ahead and rebooted the machine. So now it's detected, and you can see up here all the information is still the same. Uh, it's just now we're connected through eSATA. So I'm going to conduct that file of copy again, the same file. And you can see here now we're copying at, I mean, <laughs> that can't be right. Let's see. Delete all those files. Yes. Uh, see Robocopy from here to here and you can see now I'm copying it 157 gigabytes a minute uh, I think this clearly shows this array hauls ass when it's connected to through eSATA um, through USB 3 not so much it's funny because USB 3 is actually pretty fast I had uh, higher expectations for the performance there but it's clear that if you want this drive for a performance application, USB 3.0 is probably not the best way to attach it. So, guys, I hope this video gave you a nerdgasm. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. Um, I've got quite a few more unboxings coming your way since I got quite a few things in my latest new egg shipment. So expect more videos. Uh, I really enjoy doing them. So, guys, until next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.